Just because you don't drink doesn't mean you don't enjoy fine beverages. Whatever the reason you have not to drink, whether it's for the night or a lifetime, it's nice to know you're not alone. A 2023 study with over 52,000 responses showed us that alcohol-free is on the rise. Up to one in five people don't drink. And with the trend, there's been an explosion of alcohol-free options. Even sommeliers like me are curious because they look delicious. So let's uncork the juicy details on alcohol-free wines, taste some examples, and learn the facts. Special thanks to Hand on Heart Wines for sponsoring this episode. The term no and low refers to a category of wines crafted with less than 0.5% ABV for non-alcoholic wines and up to 1.2% ABV for low alcohol wines. In terms of wine, this category defies the definition of most wine we know of, but it's technically still wine. This is a bottle of non-alcoholic Hand on Heart Cabernet Sauvignon. This particular bottle uses the same quality grapes sourced in California as other wines, as well as the same winemaking processes. After the wine is made, it's de-alcoholized through a process that goes something like this. This is a spinning cone distiller at Bev Zero. Inside a spinning cone column are about 40 alternating fixed and spinning cones. As the wine enters and pours onto a spinning cone, it's gently spread out into a thin liquid film. The first pass vaporizes the lightest volatile compounds. These are wine's aromas. They rise up through the column. These delicate aromas condense into a colorless liquid that's collected, after which the wine runs through the column until all the alcohol is removed. Finally, those collected aromas get blended back in and the wine is complete. The result is a Cabernet Sauvignon that has all the makings of other Cabernet, but without the booze. But do they actually have the complexity of wine made with alcohol? We are gonna find out. But before we do, let's hear a note from our sponsor, Hand on Heart. Hand on Heart offers a portfolio of beautiful wines from California that have been handcrafted by experienced winemakers to bring you the best possible wine experience without the alcohol. This is Hand on Heart Sauvignon Blanc. I also have a glass of an alcoholed Sauvignon Blanc ready. First things first, let's take a look at the color. Well, they're definitely different, but that's not unexpected. Sauvignon Blanc wines can range in color depending on how they're made. And now for the smell test. See, Sauvignon Blanc is supposed to have sort of green aromatic flavors like gooseberry, honeydew melon, or passion fruit. So both of these wines should have some level of green aromatic character to them. Let's see. First, I'll take our regular alcoholed Sauvignon Blanc and give it a whiff. Yes, it definitely has aromatics. I smell a little passion fruit, a little green melon, and this subtle whiff of maybe grapefruit. Wine number two. I'm really worried because I've always heard that non-alcoholic wines don't have any aromatics. <laughs> well, that's not true. This is extremely aromatic. I get ripe flavors, passion fruit, yes, honeydew melon, definitely, and maybe even a little white peach. There's really actually a surprising amount going on on the nose of this wine that I was not expecting. Now for the taste test. Oh my goodness, what a shocker. The scientific person inside me says, no, they're different, and I can tell you where. On the end of the palate, right in the back of your throat, you feel that burn of alcohol. That's definitely present on this wine, but on this wine, it isn't. And that to me is the major difference between these two wines. Like they said, the alcohol has been removed. Now for the test you've all been waiting for, non-alcoholic Cabernet Sauvignon. And in front of me, I have our non-alcoholic Cabernet Sauvignon and an alcoholed version of Cabernet as well. In the Wine Folly book, Cabernet Sauvignon has some typical flavors. It's known for black cherry and currant flavors along with a little green note that is sometimes described as graphite, 
along with cedar and baking spice aromas, probably from oak aging. So let's see if these wines compare. Looking at the color, I can see these wines are slightly different, but they're both medium ruby, medium purple, and that's okay for Cabernet. First, let's check our control. Yep, smells like Cabernet. And now for the dealcoholized Cabernet. Whoa, still very aromatic. I get more black plum, a black currant, blackberry note, a whiff of graphite, and even a touch of cedar. They're both in the realm of Cabernet Sauvignon. Let's give them both a taste. Cabernet Sauvignon is a great wine and love because it's rich, full-bodied, has texture on the palate from tannins, and leaves with a long, tingly finish with sweetness, savoriness, and a little bit of smokiness from oak aging. Now for our de-alcoholized example. What's shocking about this wine is it has tannins. It has a texture on the palate, an explosion of flavor, it's rich and full-bodied, and the finish is pretty long and tingly. I would say the only major difference that I get out of this glass is that finish ending doesn't have that tingle from alcohol. There is another thing here that's going on. The wine has just a touch of residual sugar. Those tannins are actually quite rich and you need a little bit of sweetness, not too much, to complement and counteract that tannin so it's not so dry and astringent on your palate. They're different, but not that much different. And we have more. We have a bottle of the Naughty, a sparkling dealcoholized rosé, a Riesling from Germany, and finally Non, made in Australia, a wine proxy, sort of mimicking the flavor of wine. This really smells to me like a sparkling rosé. It has all the aromatics I'm familiar, and the bubble pops. Wow great acidity, an explosion of flavors. It's a dry wine. I find it to be delicious, shockingly. And this looks like every other glass of Riesling. Let's give it a try. Whoa, it has the same great sparkling acidity that I expect from Riesling. The only difference is on that finish. I don't get the burn of alcohol. Now this wine is a quandary. It's a proxy. It's not actually made with wine, but they're mimicking the flavors that you might get in a real red wine. Stewed cherries, yes, that is a flavor I commonly get in red wine. And coffee, believe it or not, that's a pretty common flavor you might find in Chianti. Let's give it a sniff. Whoa, stewed cherry coffee flavors. A lot of spices are going on in this glass. Whoa. That is the most unwine of the set. And yet, it's still delicious. I could see drinking this alongside a delicious meal of maybe a stewed or roasted chicken, just like you might a Pinot Noir. Well, that was surprising, as well as totally and utterly fascinating. I'm curious to know if you've dipped into NA wines. I'd love to hear your stories and recommendations in the comments below. Now, as a sommelier, I think the growth of non-alcoholic wines, if anything, shows us that wine offers something so much more than just booze. It's an adventure in taste and flavor, which all of these wines have. So I think that I'm on the wagon. And if you like this episode, send Wine Folly some love. Share this with somebody who wants to learn more about wine and alcohol-free wine at that. And if you want to learn more about wine, be sure to subscribe to the free wine newsletter at winefolly.com. And until next time, happy tasting. Peace out.